Two teams at three and three. Both teams coming off just gut-wrenching defeats last week in games that both coaches and staffs felt like they played well enough to win, but some self-inflicted wounds, of course, cost them the victory. Here's Elijah Badger on the opening kickoff. He's out to the 25, 27-yard line when it's all said and done. So here comes DJ Lagway, a talented five-star recruit, one of the most highly sought-after players in last year's recruiting cycle. 6'3", 240-pounder out of Willis, Texas. The 2023 Gatorade National High School Player of the Year, considered by many a top 10 overall prospect. And how about this, a true freshman and Jaden Ball behind him. So for the first time, Florida started two freshmen in the backfield. Lagway, nice move out over the 40 and slides at the 43-yard line. Again, a 15 to start things off. And that is what he can do with his legs. And I think this is going to be the big thing for him, not only this game, but going forward, Dave, of understanding when and when not to take hits. Obviously, you're elusive. You have a big size, but not a lot of depth now with Graham Hurts behind you that he's banged up. So really smart, smart move there by number two, taking a slide. First down and 10 from the 40. Hand it off to Ball. Big collision at the 45. Come on, Dumas Johnson led the charge. Pick up a five. Well, the Gators offense, you see they pass just a touch more than they run the football, averaging 28 points a game. That is 12th in the SEC, and that is 81st in the country, 261 through the air. That'll get you eighth in the SEC, top 40 nationally. Lagway's throw batted in the air, and it'll fall to the turf around midfield. So that'll bring up a third down and five. Trying to hit Frazier's over there. Jaquavion, the senior. Third and short situation. Still like, obviously, medium. Got to watch out for, for DJ's running ability and things that he really liked. He told us yesterday, bootlegs, getting on the run, the RPO game, also flood concepts, which are really good for single high coverage, which Kentucky will do throughout the ball game here. Three-man rush by Kentucky. Lagway moves left, throws, has a man wide open at the 25. It's Eugene Wilson dancing around to the 15. And a big hitter for the Gators, and they're inside the red zone after a gain of 40. DJ using his legs to buy time and just like broken coverage down the field. They're thinking quick game, third and short. Young quarterback, he's going to want to get the ball out of his hands. And then Eugene Smith, Eugene Wilson gets on top for the big first down. Hand it off. The ball moves to the 10. He'll spot it back at the 11, it looks like. Keyshawn Silver. Got a little banged up last week for Kentucky, but still anchoring that nose spot. The big boy at 336 pounds introduced himself to the true freshman, Jaden Ball. I'm about to hit third down. Really good job by the Florida offensive line. And talking with both staffs about that, this is a much improved Florida offensive line than what they've been the past two seasons. That handoff goes to Ball again. He's inside the five, down to about the four. Jordan Lovett. Coming up to make the play. That'll be a Gator first down. It's first and goal from the four. Ball stays in the game. Again, it's ball. This time he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second and goal. Uh, you get the first real look at Deion Walker and how disruptive he can be in the run game they really don't want to run at number zero but it's hard to run away from him with that size just splits the double team takes on another blocker in the backfield 6'6 345 he is a handful up front the true freshman ball behind the true freshman quarterback lagway will fake it to ball looking to the end zone lagway moving 
Looking, and he'll be dropped back at the 11-yard line. Alex Afari Jr. making another big play for Kentucky inside the red zone, and this was a problem last week for Florida. Three of six in the red zone. In the second quarter, they were 0 for 3 against Tennessee in the red zone. Yeah, and, and, and not just not scoring touchdowns, but turnovers as well. Not putting points on the board, which cost them a week ago there in Knoxville. And right there for DJ, that's one of those freshman mistakes right there, understanding, listen, the defense is going to win plays. They have scholarship guys. They're really good on that side of the football. Just throw it away. Don't lose those precious yards. So now your third and goal from the 11, Lagway. That ball is batted in the air, and it'll fall to the turf incomplete. Deion Walker, the All-American, making a couple of All-American type plays on this drive. It is difficult. I don't care how big DJ is to throw over a 6'6 defensive lineman. And we've seen two of the past three plays, just how athletic he is. And those hands up there to knock it away. So a 29-yard field goal attempt for Trey Smack, who's 5 of 7 on the year. Gannon Burt is the new snapper for Florida. Rocco Underwood, who's been snapping for a few years now, has been injured. The snap is clean, execution perfect, and the 29-yarder splits the uprights, and the Gators will pick up three on their opening possession of the game. This kick will sail through the back of the end zone. And here comes Brock Vandegrift. The Georgia transfer, first year at Kentucky. Been really impressed with number 12 with, at times this year, being under a lot of duress from this offensive line. Former five-star quarterback coming out of high school. Last week, 15 to 25, 158, a touchdown and no interceptions. Demi Sumo Carbe in the backfield. They will hand it to Demi and he will get it to the 28-yard line. The junior out of Bogart, Georgia. On the air, he's completing about 60% of his passes for 951 yards, just five touchdowns, does have those two interceptions. And really didn't get to play a whole much at Georgia in 13 games with the Dogs, just 21 total passes for 165 yards. Big hole off the right side. Sumo Carpe over the 40, out to the 43-yard line. Bridges able to wrap him up, but not before a 15-yard pickup for the Cats. Well, that's what they need to do. We talk about how do you how do you make Brock a little bit more comfortable and see the left side offensive line doing a great job with the kickout block. And Sumo Kongbe has been tremendous this entire season, but they feel like they, they're finally healthy at the running back spot, and it's going to take some of that pressure off their quarterback. Trying to set up a little screen to the outside, and that's the tight end, Kamari Anderson, who's met almost immediately, gets to the 45, so gain of a couple of yards. But Kentucky's offense, you see they run it a little bit more than they've been throwing it this year, but the point total at just uh, 20 and a half points is 16th in the league, 114th in the country. They're not built for shootouts. They want slow, methodical games. They just... Really a lack of explosive plays down the field has hurt this offense. On second down and eight. That one's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Caleb Banks got his big paw up in the air, knocked it down. Boy, this Florida defense the last couple of weeks really taking it to another level. And ever since the bye week, just more aggressive. Guys doing what they need to do up front. That shit was number 99, Cam yeah. Jackson. Talking about the size of Deion Walker, Cam Jackson says, I'm 6'6", 340 pounds soon. Get up there and knock some footballs around. Third down and eight. Vandegrift's pass right through the hands of his intended target, Jordan Dingle. Had a chance to make the grab, and generally, he's pretty sure-handed. They did a decent enough job up front. They're going to bring double-A pressure, cross dog from the linebackers. And right there, Dingle just, he needs to feel the zone coverage. He doesn't want to run out to that corner, back corner that's sitting on the outside. I thought 
Brock does a good job of trying to hold them up so he can catch it and then get up north to try to get the first down. Tight ends just got to have a better feel. Jim DK back to return this punt. And a fair catch called inside the 10 yard line. Now they'll run Jacoby Jackson out, the redshirt junior out of Pensacola, Florida. Junior college transfer. His first action tonight on the second series. Hand off to the right side to Jackson. In that first series, we saw DJ Lagway, what he can bring, and that was uh, moving around a little bit, picking up a 40-yarder. Yeah, moving, using his legs, keeping his eyes down the field. That's the most impressive thing, Dave, with a young quarterback. When things are a little murky in front of you, they tend to put their eyes down. DJ keeps his eyes up. Same thing he did a week ago in Knoxville. Just shows the maturity of this young 18-year-old. And as good as Graham Mertz was in terms of completing passes, one thing that maybe lacked in his area were those big plays. Get a nice run here from Jacoby Jackson. He's out to the 25. That's a game of 11 and a first down. And even though Lagway played certainly a lot fewer snaps than Mertz, he had presented more big plays for this offense. Yeah, I asked the coaching staff that. Like, is he just, were you calling it differently? Did he just luck into it? And a little bit was just, who they played, obviously, in week two for Sanford, but he does have a little bit more juice in that cannon. First down and 10, stay on the ground, left side, running it with Jackson. Zion Childress comes up to make the play. I'm sure Kentucky staff right now not too happy with the lack of success on first and second down at the moment. They want to be able to put him in third and long situations, bring some exotic blitzes, don't make him comfortable. Right now, Florida's offense line doing a really good job in both pass and run pro. Eugene Wilson goes in motion. Little play fake. Lagway lofts it up and just a little too far for Chim DK. And that'll go incomplete. Third down on the way. job steps up into the pocket and just overthrew him and something you want to watch out for DJ throughout this ball game is just his footwork in the pocket of stepping up not falling off not throwing sidearm right there I think he had to be a little bit creative because of the pressure in his face it's something they're working hard on is getting him up in the pocket keeping the good base to be a little bit more accurate split Jackson out underneath throw is Caught by Boardingham, the tight end. He is wrapped up. They'll spot his forward progress out near the 33. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the line to gain, and here comes that Gator punt team. Jordan Levitt making a nice play for the Kentucky defense. Boy, this is such a good defense. I mean, it is. They have been tested, and they have uh, stood up to all those tests this year. Brad White now in his sixth year as the coordinator of that defense has uh, got himself some guys that have played a bunch of college football. Macklin back to return this punt. And it's a beaut. Jeremy Crawshaw, one of the best ooh, in the business. Fair catch call for taken. 43 yard punt, no return. They got the athletes. It's now they finally started to execute the game plan more effectively. Yeah, they used that bye week to their benefit for sure. Hard run by Demi Sumo Karng Bay, a senior. They've only stick on that bye week topic a little bit too with Florida and what they did. They, they decided to make practices more competitive. They broke up into two teams, kept points, good versus good, and they kind of carried that over in the practices during the regular season as well, and they've just seen those guys essentially getting more game-like reps, which has helped both sides of the football. Piper comes across from his linebacker spot to make the play there, and that's a guy, speaking of that off week, that really elevated his game, and he won the starting job a couple of weeks ago during that off week with his effort, his energy, and kind of the guy that rallied that defense. Well, he plays with a high motor, and I think that's something that the coaching staff went to him and said, we need you to elevate everyone else on this defense. Get those guys playing with the same kind of motor in which you play with. Anthony Brown-Stevens goes in motion. 
And he'll hand it off left side. Jimmy Sumo Carnway, where he's tough to bring down, but he'll pick up some extra yards. They met him at the line of scrimmage. He ends up getting five and a half, maybe six. Pyburn finally takes him to the turf. Man, it's been fun to watch number zero this season. He's just tough, six foot, 210. See him bouncing off tacklers all season long. And could have been a tackle for loss right there. He's able to sneak through and get five yards. Sumo Kong Bay again. Shamar James, first one there for the Gators. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the line, which is out the 45-yard line. Well, this is what this Kentucky offense is hoping to accomplish, is run the football, get things going. And then they haven't been able to take a lot of shots. A lot of teams have been playing pretty soft against them. But at some point, you hope you time it up right, sometime maybe even this drive, where you can take a shot down the field for an explosive. Oh, it's a movement by Kentucky. Penalties an issue last week. False start on the offense, number 62. It's a five-yard penalty. Kentucky was the least penalized team in the SEC until the 12 violations a week ago. Very uncharacteristic, especially coming off of bye week at home versus Vandy. Something they do not do often. And, and we talk about the mistakes for Florida and what cost them from winning that game in Knoxville. Same thing for Kentucky last week. Vandy, a really good football team this year, but still, Kentucky shot themselves in the foot with penalties throughout the ball game. Now they're looking at a third down, and let's call it seven, seven and a half. Batted down, incomplete. George Gums Jr. knocks it to the turf, and here comes the Kentucky putting units. Well, first possession, they showed that double-A pressure and brought the crossdog blitz. This time, they're actually going to drop the linebackers and bring a weak side third linebacker. And perfectly executed defensively, drops right into the zone, and Vandergriff unable to get the conversion. That defense executing at a higher level for the past three weeks. Jim DK first in the SEC, second in the FBS in punt return average. Almost 20 a game. And he'll be wrapped up at the 28-yard line, but a flag comes in toward the end of that play. Illegal formation on the picking team. Number 12 was not on the line of scrimmage. He created the five in the backfield. During the return, holding on the return team, number 24. Those penalties will offset, will replay fourth down. Well, they believe in their head coach. They just got to find a way to get some wins down the stretch in a very difficult schedule, yeah. which, once again, makes this, this game tonight very important for the Gators. High kick. That'll bounce out of bounds. We're about the same spot we were a few minutes ago. He is more than prepared to handle being the role of being quarterback here at the University of Florida. 317 to go in the opening quarter. That handoff goes to the freshman ball. Flag comes in behind the play. Gain of nine, but maybe coming back. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face on the defense number 90. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run, and it carries an automatic first down. So a nine-yard gain turns into a 24-yard gain. Ripka, left side of the screen, you see. Oh, yeah. And right in the face mask of the offensive lineman. Tack on another 15 yards. He got one right back, though. Ripka got, got a paw in the face. But another penalty against Kentucky moves it out over the 40 to the 44-yard line. Out of that pistol formation, Wilson in motion. Hagway looking to throw, tucks it now. And we'll get about a yard when it's all said and done. The Eric Jackson, these linebackers with Jackson, Dumas Johnson, Afari, J.J. Weaver, they've seen so much football. 
Like, it's hard to kind of fool and trick them. Oh, it is very, and, it, and they know that they're going against a young quarterback. Florida's going to try to keep it easy for him early on. Bootlegs, RPO, stuff that they see week in and week out. And heck, stuff they see with their quarterback in practice because of his mobility as well. So, yeah, it's going to take a lot to fool this front seven. Magway will keep it off the right side, and he'll slide down after the first down to the 45-yard line. Good play call there. I'm not sure how much we're going to see running in between the tackles for Florida because of the depth issue now at the quarterback spot. So that, that, that's going to be a little bit of a rarity. They, they want to use his legs, but more in the perimeter run game you'll see throughout the ball game. Well, they actually spot the slide back a yard shy of the first down. But Lagway will pick it up here for sure. Gets a block, turns the corner. He's out of bounds inside the 25, down to the 22-yard line. Briston Story pushes him out. 25 yards for Mr. DJ Lagway. See, that, that's more of the running that you're going to see in this game. Get him to the outside where he can protect his body. Does a really good job on the zone read, reading Ch Childress, number 11 for Kentucky. And then, man, with that size and speed, so tough in the open field. Jaden Ball lines up a tailback. Give it to Ball. Moves to the 20. Stopped there by J.Q. Hardway. Hardaway, the junior out of Columbus, Georgia, came in from Cincinnati where he played a year, but now in his second year with this Kentucky defense. Making his seventh start of the season. Boy, he had a really good game. Go back and watch that Ole Miss game. He had 11 tackles, career high for him. Ball. He's to the 15, picks up six. Well, that was absolutely filthy. One on the open field. You got a 225 pound back. You're worried about him maybe running you over. He gives you a little shimmy shimmy and breaks it to the inside, breaking the ankles of the defender. They really like this young running back and just the maturity is going to continue to come. The knowledge of the playbook is going to come, but really impressed with number 13 so far. Yeah, they think he is a future star in this league. Coach, how does your defense have to hold here? Yeah, it's a big play right here. I mean, the time of possession, they're moving the ball, they're getting chunks. Offensively, we're struggling right now. You know, it's a, it's a tough situation for us. We're getting some good yardage on first, second down runs, but we got to get some chunks, too. We got to get some explosive plays. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, he said it. This is a really big play. Third down and two, two and a half coming up for Florida. They're inside the red zone. Picked up a field goal, their first trip inside the red zone. Jaden Ball, the freshman, true freshman, in the game still on this possession. Lagway will line up in front of Ball. Hand it off to Jaden. He's trying to get the edge, and he is stuffed. Loses a couple of yards. Jordan Levitt comes up along with J.Q. Hardaway. And now what do you do? Uh, you kick the field goal here. You take the 6-0 lead, especially the way your defense is played. Young quarterback take the points early on in the football game. And right there, I mean, Kentucky comes out, cover zero, linebacker safeties all within three yards of the line of scrimmage. That's something to take down as an offensive coordinator. Think of some sort of play action pass next time you get inside the 15-yard line. 29-yarder earlier in the game for Trey Smack. This one will be from 33. Out of the hole to Jeremy Crawshaw. Execution is flawless, and the kick will split the uprights. High kick taken by Brown, a couple of yards deep. This guy is electric, but he has lost his charge around the 17-yard line. Big special teams play from Sharif Denson. First down and 10. Here is Vandegrift. Brock out over the 25 to the 27 yard line. Took a couple of big hits. Triquez Bridges will get credit for the tackle. 
So those are the ones that I just worry are starting to really take a toll on Brock this season. Could have easily thrown the ball into the flat right there instead. I, it's hard to take the competitor out of him because that's, that's, that's his ball game. So Marion Wilcox in at running back for the Cats. He's a big play potential player. They'll hand it to him. Hole number 10. Here's a big play out to midfield into Florida territory. Brought down by Devin Moore. Wilcox. He averaged over 11 yards per carry last week against Vandy. Uh, it starts with the big guys up front. Number 73, Dylan Ray comes from left to right. You see him able to lug the first defender in the hole to really open it up for the running back. And then from there, using the speed. And this is an offense that is wanting more explosive plays in the run game. Only five this year, plus 20 yards. And Wilcox is that guy. And now we get the first look at Wimsett at the quarterback spot. Wimsett will take the snap and he'll hand it off. And then he'll get it to Barry and Brown. George Gums Jr. handles that gain of three on the play. And you talked about it this week and yesterday with me. Like, you think we'll see a little bit more Wimsett when it comes to the running option on this offense? Yeah, and, and listen, he can throw the football too, especially down the field. So you may see a little bit of some shot plays as well. Yeah. But taking runs off the number 12's plate, you saw it last week. I think you're going to continue to see it more and more throughout the season. Back to Vandergriff, going up top, has Brown caught, touchdown Kentucky, 45 yards. And he missed it. Just the second time in his career, he has missed an extra point. Now 61 of 63 in his career. He was perfect on the year in field goals and extra points this season. See how that comes back to haunt Kentucky if it does. But the fleet flicker executed perfectly. The Cats are on the board. We're tied at six. All right, let's go back to the fleet flicker touchdown. You're going to get quarters coverage, so this safety can help and run support, but that cornerback thinks he has support from the safety as well. So this is what happens. You run the football, you get the safety to get a little sniffy. Corner thinks he has some help as well. Not so fast. Barry and Brown down the field for the touchdown. They just need some big plays, and they got one there to tie the game after the box gets the points. This is returnable. Jaden Ball. And he trips up and gets out to the 20-yard line. Of course, this Florida offense going without their sixth-year senior, Graham Mertz, who is leading the country in completion percentage out after a torn ACL. And he's standing by alongside Marilyn Payne. Graham, I know this week has been tough for you. How are you handling the recovery process, even he heading into surgery next week? Yeah, I mean, I think I got a great, oh, we're right here. <laughs> I, got, I got a great support group, uh, great people here in Florida. And I think the biggest thing right now for me is just my faith. I got, I got a great faith family here in Gainesville. They've been supporting me a ton and, and great friends on this team. So it's been good. I've been trying to stay in this building as much as possible this week leading up to surgery. I know you've been leading DJ as he is prepared to start tonight. What has the balance been like for you between letting him do his thing and telling him how to do this? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I mean, obviously our coaches do a great job with the game plan, getting them prepped. I mean, our uh... oh, sorry, <laughs> I got distracted. I mean, our, our coaches do a great job for us, just setting up the plan for us during the week. So for us as players, it's just trusting them, trusting our prep. So for me, I'm kind of like, I'm just, I'm just the friend coach. I'm, I'm here for him as a person during the week. Uh, just getting the confidence. I mean, he's, he's a hell of a player. He's done a great job of prep all week. So uh, he's going he's gonna to go down here and score a touchdown right here. What have you told him to encourage that confidence? I just told him to be himself. I mean, I, I think nowadays, I mean, there's a lot of external stuff in the world. I'm just being true to yourself, being you. I mean, for him, he's a special player. I mean, if he goes out there and plays like DJ, I mean, he's, he's going to make a lot of plays. He's going to lead his team to wins. So he's a special player. I told him just be you and have fun. And I think. Uh, what you got to do playing this game. Thanks for the time. We'll let you watch this drive, all right? Yeah, thank you. Go Gators. Appreciate you. Thank you, Marilyn. And certainly, Graham is a Gator through and through. And even though he didn't start here, obviously transferred in from Wisconsin, but um, he bleeds this uh, orange and blue for sure. 
And boy, well, he's a sharp young man. If he wants to have a career in television, he certainly probably go that direction. Third down and ten. Because you know you got to be sharp to be in the TV business, right? Lagway in trouble. Looking sharp. Dumps it off and it's incomplete. So three incompletions on that possession. Alex Safari was chasing him down. And here comes that Gator punt team. Well, they did a good job up front, creating some confusion. They're going to bring him to the, from the outside to the inside. Nice stunt, but then DJ one on one is able to buy a little bit more time. Just nothing open down the field. That was three good plays from this secondary for Kentucky of really tight windows or no one open down the field. Cross shot to punt it away. Jamal Macklin back to return this one. Excuse me. Barry and Brown back there to return. 53 yard punt. They may have thrown that play dead. There are flags all the way back at the line of scrimmage. So they are discussing things with our referee Lee Hedrick back there. Lee Hendrick is during the kick, holding, receiving team number 81. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down. So it'll be Kentucky football. You know, back to Graham Mertz for a second. Obviously, you know, he was so emotional after the injury, and it was non-contact injury, just kind of like what like his mm. back pedaling and his just knee gave out. And well, he sent this out on social media, and, and um, as he said, it was two incredible years for him. He just told Marilyn how much he appreciates this family that's around him, um, and the support for him has been wonderful. And uh, best of Luck to him. Best wishes to him moving forward. Now that surgery's next week, and hopefully he can get himself right and get a shot at the next level. First down and 10. Wilcox this time stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Last carry picked up 25 yards on the previous drive. I can relate. Senior year tore my ACL non-contact injury as well, and as she was against Kentucky, senior night and, and just a tough way to go out and man watching him over the past year and a half run this offense how efficient he was and how much time that he spent in the film room in the practice and he talked to everyone what an incredible leader and great resource for dj chip trainman is first carry as a kentucky wildcat the transfer from ohio state who has been out, had a hand injury. They thought he were going to get him back after a bye week heading into Ole Miss, but had a setback. And that's his first carry. They certainly are glad to have him back to add some depth to that uh, running back room with Sumo Kongbe and Jamarian Wilcox. Oh, that's, that's the key word, depth at the running back position. They feel like they have not had that the entire season. And finally, that running back room has helped, and you can see some more rotation going forward for this football team. Third down in a yard and a half. Going with that sneak there with Vandegrift, and I don't think he got it. He had to get out to the 31. It looks like they're going to spot that. At the, right on the 30. That was a long way to get the quarterback sneak. This wasn't just a line up and a foot or two. It was about a yard, yard and a half to gain in order to get it and you're talking about a Florida defensive line that's got some meat up front Desmond Watson more than 400 pounds big number 21 and I mean it's hard to push 400 pounds of meat right there and this Florida defensive line has done a great job okay how about George Gums coming into the back of that play and grabbing Vandergriff by his ankles and dragging him back Jim DK back to return this punt. Fair catch called for at the 35-yard line. That one bobbled around a bit, but he held on to it. In the latest college football playoff projected bracket, Alabama probably slide down a bit. You wonder what a two-loss Alabama team will look like on Monday. Here's a nice pickup of eight from Jaden Ball. And a touchdown saving tackle right there from Hardaway.
This defense bend but don't break. Let's see if Florida can create an explosive play themselves. Ball will split out to the near side. Empty set here for Lagway. Kentucky bringing four. Down the middle, passes there, caught. Ten, down to the seven-yard line goes Elijah Badger. Hardaway and Bryant drag him down, but not before a 50-yard pickup. Those are the explosive plays, the arm strength, the accuracy that number two has. You're going to play single high. Those seam routes are going to be open down the field. They'll hand it to ball left side. Breaks through a couple defenders. Touchdown, Florida. Jaden Ball. Well, we're wondering what this running back situation would look like without Montrell Johnson Jr. Well, we're going to see single high coverage, so we're going to get single high safety. This safety is going to roll down, which gives seam routes a really good and is a quarterback with tremendous arm strength and is able to fit that ball down the field on an absolute rope, keeps the receiver on the move. And then after that, get inside the five-yard line. They struggled in the red zone a week ago. Right now, ball is running like a man on fire. Two freshmen making big plays for the Gators. And that'll bounce through the end zone. Picked a bad time to, to struggle rolling into the SEC. Chip train him in at running back. They will throw. Dane Key makes the catch, and he'll be out of bounds. Let's see where they spot him. It'll be close to the 36, so that'll be a first down. Gain of 11, Jason Marshall over there in coverage. Well, let's see now, all of a sudden, you had the flea flicker, the last possession for the big, big touchdown. We'll see if this Florida defense kind of eases up a little bit on uh, this Kentucky run game to get going a little bit more. Trainum stays in the game, head running back under center is Vandergrift. Play fake to Trainum. Boy, Brock has plenty of time to throw and just airmailed his receiver. Key was open. Well, you're going to get a post route with a deep cross from Key, and I think he makes the right read, and, and it is very tough to overthrow. Number six at 6'3, 210. You know, the safety takes a, takes a post route. I think at that point, the ball's already thrown. Safety's reacting to it. Good decision, just gotta, just gotta make the pass. Second down and 10. This train running hard to the left side over the 40. To the 41. He introduces himself to the true freshman, Miles Graham. Linebacker from right here. He holds high school in Gainesville. And besides the flea flicker, I don't think we can talk Enough about just the improvement from this Florida defense. And right now, third and long situation. See if these edge players can get off the line of scrimmage and create some havoc in the backfield for Brock. Demi Sumo Kong Bay at running back on third down and five. Vandegraaff over the middle, high, almost caught, and maybe intercepted. The Gators will have it. Try Quez Bridges with his first interception of the year. Well, they can continue to show the double-A pressure. It's the third time we've seen it. First time they brought the linebackers. The next two times they drop them out in the coverage. And no excuse, Brock has to put this on Dingle's body, able to catch it, possibly get the first down. Ball's high. It's the last thing you want to see as a quarterback when that ball goes and starts getting tipped around. Usually advantage to the defense. Gators will have it at the 46. 202 yards of offense for Florida here with 6.53 to go in the second quarter. 
Jacoby Jackson at running back. They'll hand it to him. And he is hit by a couple of Wildcat defenders and stays alive into Kentucky territory around the 47-yard line. The Eric Jackson, Octavius Oxendine finally wrap him up, but a gain of seven. Hard news running. We've seen it now for two possessions from these Florida running backs, getting their opportunity with Montrell out of... Really, we can be the guys. Keyshawn Silver is down for Kentucky, their nose tackle. Boy, when he came out of high school, he was highly sought after, considered a top 10 player in his class coming out of high school by ESPN. Try to get an update on his status before the night's over. Second down and three. Empty set to Lagway and company. Cats bringing four. Side on throw, and that one is picked off. Christian Story getting some help to the 30, to the 20, down to the 10-yard line. Boy, can Kentucky needed something to happen, and they just got it. Christian Story, the senior, a transfer from Alabama, goes 63 yards on that interception return. Oh, going back to the well, trying to hit that seam route once again. Just eyes it a little bit too much, and, and ball was way too far inside. You got a nickel in Zion Childress, who's running with the receiver as well. And the third thing, you threw it across the field. So just a very difficult throw, trying to fit it in there when it, no one was open. Ball just outside the 10. Vandergriff keeps it himself. Gets a block from Sumo Pargbag, and he'll Barrel his way down to the six yard line, give him four and a half on the carry. Triquez Bridges, first one to meet him. These are the moments, too, and I was just about to say to him when they go do it that I would expect Gavin Wimsett to come into the football game to add the threat of the quarterback run. You can get him on the move, see if you can get some sort of bootleg where he has the option to pass the ball as well. It's 90% run. With Gavin Wimson, he's in the shotgun. He'll take it here, looking for a little bit of room. Dances forward to the two-yard line. Jaden Robinson able to make the tackle. Now they take him out. I would have kept him in there for one, if not two more plays, knowing that you could still get a first down. Spotted just outside the two. So maybe a yard and a half, two, to get that first down. Sumo Kongbe, in at running back. Sumo Kongbe, met in the back, the breaks a tackle and dives forward. This will be about the spot. I think he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Jaden Robinson was the first one there to disrupt that play. Uh, another broken tackle for Sumo Kongbe. And I like the decision here to go for it on fourth and one. You're on the road, hostile environment. I still think that you got to put Wimsett in the football game. A little bit more of a threat and ability to run the football. They but I do like Brock's hard nose ability to kind of get a little bit dirty as well. They got the big boys in the game. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. They'll hand it off. Simo Kongbe. I don't know if he got the first down. He's still driving forward. They blow the play dead just inside the two. That's not going to be enough. Well, let's start with the third down play. Sumo Kongbe does whatever he could to try and get the first down, but you see the swarm of Gators. And Yang again by big number 21, Desmond Watson. And then they try to go right down the middle, the heart of this defense, and the Gators said, no boss. And it stops there at the yard and a half line. And, you know, they, they kept big Desmond Watson in there in the middle of that line, 450 pounder, number 21, just clogging things up. Pistol formation. Coach Stoops over there, boy, he is hot on that far sideline. He is barking. Time out. This is their first charge time out of the half.
Handed off here to Ball. Jaden Ball to the 25 to the 28 yard line and out of bounds by JQ Hardaway. That'll be a gain of 26. I think the MVP right now of this football game has been the offensive line for the Florida Gators. Just zone blocking scheme. Get to the second level. You had a cutoff block from the tight end. And then the young freshman is, is the beneficiary of that. Finds the hole. Another explosive play for this offense. Ball was 74 yards on the ground, averaging 6.7 yards per carry. Couple of fakes there. Lagway showing that big arm down the middle. Badger has it inside the 15, down to the 12. 59 yards on that pickup. Well, he is their shot guy, play action. Once again, you see the safety jump on the play action, leaves the cornerback on an island one-on-one. -on -one. And then the elite speed of number six in a beautifully thrown football by DJ Lagway. First down and 10. From the 13-yard line, 307 and counting before halftime. And a whistle will stop this play. Charge to the snap, timeout, Florida. Their first charge timeout of the half. This will be the 30-second timeout. A little bit too greedy against the run, leaves this cornerback one-on-one with outside leverage, thinking that he has support from the safety. You see the outside leverage. And then the receiver steps on the toes of the defensive back, uses his speed, and a beautifully thrown football. But the arm strength of DJ Lagway, one hitch gets up into the pocket, and then DJ Waller has no chance to recover to make a play on the football. First down and 10. Here's a little toss sweep to Ball. He's to the 10-yard line, picks up about three and a half. It is what it looked like after he let go of this football. Just watch the confidence, like this one's going to work. A little swagger. One hitch is like, yep, that's good. Pose and lead. Look at the right arm. <laughs> Look at the right arm. Uh, that is confident. as good as you can do throwing a post right down the field. And listen, love me some quarters coverage. You want to run quarters, outside leverage with the cornerback? You got some speed by our receiver. We'll throw some post routes all day. His grandfather coming to his first game here at the Swamp, watching his grandson put on a show here in the first half. Here's Paul dancing around, got a great block, and he will walk it into the end zone. Damian George Jr. with the block of the night springs his true freshman running back. Gators trying to make it a 14-point game, and they do so. Well, you mentioned Damian George Jr., 6'6", 345, gets the double pancake, working across. He's not only going to take one defender, he's going to take both defenders to the ground. Here's one, and I'm going to bring him to number two. They knock each other over, get the double pancake, and then... Jaden Ball, who's had a great first half, sets it up perfectly, and then easy coast into the end zone for another touchdown Number for the Gators. 29 for Florida is now 38. 29 is 38. That turns out to be a 98-yard touchdown drive, the longest of the season for Florida. The previous long was 93 against Mississippi State. Big tackle on that, by the way, on that interception return. Good effort from Jacoby Jackson. Don't want to overlook that as he came a long way to stop story. And that'll sail through the back of the end zone. Boy, not just nothing working there. Gain of a yard. Joey Slackman coming up to make the play. So we will step aside for this two-minute timeout. Well, I don't know who's uh, going to be happier at halftime between those guys. I know Dari's going to be sad. Here's Vandergrift right through the hands of Barry and Brown. It's intercepted.
Gators have a chance. Devin Moore pushed out of bounds around the five. And one of your top playmakers, Barry and Brown, lets it go right through his hands. He couldn't have placed it better as, yeah. as a quarterback. I mean, literally heck of a throw. right in the perfect spot in the receiver's hands and just got lazy with it. And Florida takes advantage. Devin Moore, nice concentration. We get the INT. Number 53 for Florida is now number 49. 53 is 49. And now the Gators have it first and goal from the one. This defense has brought it tonight for the Florida Gators. Ball, your running back. On the eye formation, touchdown, Gators. It's now a 21 point advantage with 144 to go before halftime. I, I got to I mean, this is an offense. This Florida offense came in averaging 400 yards per game, 28 points per game. And they're doing this against one of the best front sevens, best defenses in America. It's the, it's the downfield passing attack that's kind of opened things up a little bit. And that's, you know, Florida fans and Myself really appreciate and love all that Graham Mertz did, but Florida with 308 yards of offense. Most yards allowed in a half, obviously, for this Kentucky defense here tonight. Barry and Brown. Barry and Brown explodes across the 40, stays on his feet. Cuts it back. Barry and Brown dancing around. He's going to dance himself all the way into the end zone. Another kickoff return for a touchdown, his fifth of his career. He had some issues last week with some exchange things. That was a low snap. Through the uprights. Boy, Kentucky needed a shot in the arm, and they just got it in the form of Barry and Brown. A great block and no holding, see some double teams. You got the kicker one-on-one, -on -one. you can't let him make a tackle. And then right there, sees the end zone, get in the end zone, the speed. Man, look at that stop on an absolute dime right there towards the sideline. 100%, that is the way to redeem yourself after that drop pass. 99-yard kickoff return. He, the Gators have got one of the most difficult sketches, uh, schedules to begin with when the season started, but they're looking at Georgia, Texas, LSU, and Ole Miss in their next four. Mm. Mm. So you almost feel like in, in that football building, they know they got to have this. Have a tight formation off that right hash mark. Inside handoff. That'll go to Jacoby Jackson. See how the Gators play this. How quickly they will get up and start moving. A couple timeouts left for the Gators. Now they are slow playing this for sure. I, I, I know you got the lead, and this is this is an opportunity to learn to grow and you can't be afraid to make mistakes you just laid out the schedule going forward you cannot baby this young quarterback yeah they're just running with jackson i'm with you two timeouts in a minute and a half he's playing great you know he's had one mistake other than that he's taking care of the football i mean even you know, call a bootleg, get him on the run where he can throw it or run it and, and, and spark, the, spark the offense to see what they can do. So from a, hey, we want to win the game standpoint, like, you know, you feel pretty good about that from a, where's DJ and where do we need him to be two weeks, three weeks down the line? This is, this is a moment that you're missing out on him growing as a quarterback. Wilson comes in motion. 
The run, Lagway with it. He is tripped up behind the 30. He'll lose a couple of yards, and Kentucky will take another timeout and stop it with 15 seconds to go. Timeout, Kentucky. Jansen Dunn with a heck of a out of the half. It will be a 30 second timeout. Timer, please reset the game clock to 17 seconds. Jeremy Crawshaw will punt it away. Young man out of Australia. Gets it away. They're going to let this one hit, and Macklin runs away from it. And this will be down inside the 10 with nine seconds to go. So Kentucky, no doubt, will. There is a flag, by the way, way back at the line of scrimmage, and that'll be against Florida. Illegal formation on the kicking team, more than four in the backfield. That five yard penalty will be enforced with the previous spot with the replay of fourth down. Last year averaged a school record 48.9 yards per punt. And Macklin just lets this one sail over his head. And that'll go out of bounds. Well, Ole Miss put up 353 yards of offense against this Kentucky defense. Remember, Ole Miss going into that game was averaging over 600 yards. Your second quarter had just about everything in it, but how do you feel about what DJ's done for you tonight? Yeah, no, it's been impressive. I think ultimately he's got a lot of experience over the first half of the season, and that's proven to be beneficial. Guy just rises to the occasion, you know. It's made some really uh, impressive throws, and we're playing good around him, right? We have good balance, and ultimately our defense is doing a good job. We gave up kickoff return, Flea flicker for a touchdown. Outside of that, our defense has impressed so far. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Kentucky is just down 14. I mean, it's not like it was, it's out of the question and they get the football first here. I think this drive will be a important one. Jamarian Wilcox in the backfield. And a Griff will throw. Barry and Brown will have a first down. Let's go downstairs visit with Maryland. Kentucky barely made it out on the field before they had to take the field. Mark Stoops says we had a long conversation because we have a lot we have to adjust to. He called this offensive possession the most important possession of this football game. He said it comes down to execution. It's nothing special. We have to continue to pursue those explosive plays, and it has to start right here. Well, they got a good one to start this drive. First down. From the 36-yard line. Play fake. Vandergrift flushed out of the pocket immediately trying to turn the corner. Jack Piper hustling to push his quarterback out of bounds. Caleb Banks was the one that kind of forced the pocket and Vandergrift to move left. Well, this is pressure up front, unfortunately, for, for Kentucky. Sorry, next out. Unfortunately for Kentucky, they had a wide open receiver down the field and just not enough time for Brock Vandergriff. Vandergriff powers his way out near the 45 yard line. That's just a tough run by their quarterback. Graduated Georgia in three years as a grad transfer, but still has two years of eligibility remaining. All right, that's a good job by Wilcox, too, getting to the second level. And I mean, no matter how bad Vandergriff feels and how banged up he is, you know he's going to give it all every single play in the run game. And we'll see if he gets the ball here on some sort of read route. Kentucky 0 for 5 on third downs tonight. Make it 0 for 6. Grayson Howard meets Demi Sumo Kongbe at the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and a yard. Uh, once again, they try to go to the heart of this Florida defense. Quarterback sneaks at the goal line here on third and short situation. 
And at some point, you just got to say, we cannot run it down the middle against the size and strength of this Florida defense. Really good job by Howard sneaking through to the backfield. But, man, get your mobile quarterback on the outside because right now the middle is not working. They're going to go for it on their own side of the 50. Vandergriff throws it. Nice play. First down and a whole bunch more. Josh Caddis, the tight end, comes up with his second catch of the year, and it's the biggest one that goes for 22. Well, they're going to sneak. Caddis going from right to left play action. Everyone's going to the right side of the field, and all of a sudden, 84 sneaks right underneath the linebackers and is wide open. That is a massive conversion for this offense to stand on the field. Twin tailbacks in the game with Sumo Kong Bay and now training. They'll give it to Chip Trainum off the right side. Chip's first action of the season, if you're just joining us, been out with a hand injury all year. The transfer from Ohio State. Started his career at Arizona State for a couple of years, then two seasons at Ohio State. Now his first season at Kentucky. Last year, 85 carries, just shy of 400 yards with the Buckeyes. Now Wilcox checks in. He goes in motion. Vandergriff looks that way. Pointing to Key. Key comes back, and does he make the catch? Out of bounds. He did catch it, but it had his foot out of bounds in that blue paint over there on the far sideline. Well, they try to out and up to the field, and Devin Moore, number 28, stays on top of the route, doesn't bite on it. No one open down the field. Brock's trying to make something happen. And just not enough room. Vandergriff throws a seed down the seam. It's caught first down. Kentucky inside the 15. They go to Fred Ferrier, the second. That is his eighth catch of the year. There is some juice on that football from Brock. He's trying to fit it in between defenders. Nice dagger out. Same route that Barry and Brown dropped coming from the opposite side of the field. That's two really good passes. That's a big boy throw there from the quarterback. Well, you could just tell by his body language that that was about all he had in that right arm. Wilcox steps over a man. Looked like he lost the football for a moment. Dry Quest Bridges will get credit for the tackle, but that ball popped out of there. Got her two hands on the football in contact. A nice punch out there. <laughs> right back in his belly. Yeah. Ooh, Bridges, though, number seven coming up from the safety spot. Nice, nice punch. Gavin Wimsett. In that quarterback, we've seen him here a couple of times. Got stopped. Did Kentucky in the first half. They'll hand it off. Here comes Brown trying to get the corner. He's pushed out of bounds. Inside the five, near the three. Now as Jason Marshall, who's still down on the ground, was able to keep pushing Barry and Brown to the sideline and get extra help. Usually you get Barry and Brown with that head of steam. He's able to turn the corner. Really good job defensively of stretching it out. Hard to see what really happened there with such a pass happy league with the receivers and quarterbacks. And see, hits the turf pretty hard, goes in, tries to. Oh, yeah, maybe it's that shoulder, huh? Yeah. The way that arm kind of right arm just reached. Yeah, it looks like they're holding that right arm too as he's going to help out the field right now. He has never missed a game in his career. Boy, he is in some sort of pain. Try to get an update from Maryland as soon as we get one from that Gator sideline. Kentucky trying to stick this one in the end zone. First and goal. Wimsett turns the corner and he is walked at the one. 
Well, I do like the, get the, the decision to keep Brunset in the football game. They did not do that in the first half. Took him out after a nice run. Weren't able to convert to get the ball into the end zone. I think right now it's second down. Two is your quarterback for the next three plays. And see if you can maybe get him on the edge once again and get him in the end zone. This is a classic Kentucky drive this year. 11 plays, 74 yards to this point. Six minutes off the clock. Exactly what they needed. Converted a huge fourth down to keep it alive. And now they're trying to reap the rewards. There it goes. Wimson in for the touchdown. Completely caves the right side of the defensive line in. So you get all the movement from the right side. And then from there, just follow your running back into the end zone. You said it, Dave. I mean, that is Kentucky football. And that is what we're used to seeing from that offense when it comes to moving the ball down the field. Alex Rayner to attempt this point after. And he will convert it. John Marshall Jr., the senior out of Miami. Told you, has never missed a game in his career. This was a critical opening drive, maybe in the season for Kentucky. And they certainly produced with a 12-play, 75-yard that was dragged on the side of six and a half minutes. Out to the 23-yard line goes Jaden Ball. And let's see what Florida can do. They had an interesting first half. A well-balanced attack, and Kentucky's on their heels. Let's see if they made some adjustments during halftime. Brad White has been excellent in that department throughout his career as the defensive coordinator for the Cats, and they get a stop after a couple of yards from Jaden Ball. Javon Dumas Johnson, the first one there for the Cats. Well, I just think schematically at times, yes, but I just think there's a physicality thing there in the first half. Florida was the more physical team on offense. They were able to run the football, running backs look pretty good, and then they timed up their shot plays just absolutely perfect based on the coverages. Man look from Kentucky. The play fake. Lab way to throw. This one is perfect. Out to the 45, pushed out of bounds near the 47. It's Jim DK with his 20th catch of the year. Well, this is one of the routes that coaching staff said DJ loves to throw. You're going to get the deep cross post route to the field. Deep cross coming from left to right. And you're just going to high load the flat defender with someone in the flat and then perfectly up and down football. That handoff is wrapped up immediately by the All-American Dion Walker. That's not the first time we've seen him blow up a play. No, he was, uh, we haven't called his name in a while. Great start to the game from zero. Got in the backfield, was able to tip a ball as well in the first possession. But man, you leave him one-on-one. -on -one. That's 350 pounds moving like that. Ooh, it's scary. It's scary. Yeah, I mean, that is. That's 6'6", 348 pounds out of Detroit, Michigan coming at you. Here's Lagway. Slips the defender, and he'll be pushed out of bounds inside Kentucky territory at the 47-yard line by Alex Safari. Gain of seven. And just, just making good decisions, but still, after that last touchdown by Kentucky, you and I both looked at each other and said, that is why you should have done something in the two-minute drive. Yeah. He's taking care of the football. Had the one mistake other than that, had a great first half. Kentucky gets the ball to start the second half, try and get some more points on the board, and now all of a sudden, it's a one-score game. So I just think he's doing a good job with his decision-making throughout the game and been really darn accurate as well. Walker takes a breather on this third down and five for Florida. Lagway stands in that pocket, throws to a wide open DK. He's to the 10, to the five, and dropped down at the three yard line. Ty Bryant saves a touchdown, but 45 yards for the Gators. It's the same type of concept that they just ran for the big play. You're gonna have someone in the flat, and then you're gonna have a deep cross round, and DJ does a terrific job once again of buying enough time to allow the play to develop. It's a long developing play. The receiver is going to catch the ball somewhere between 15 to 20 yards across the football field. So 
offensive line did their job, DJ did his, and they're rewarded with another possession inside the five yard line. Ball lines up behind his quarterback. They'll give it to Ball, and he is met, loses a yard or two. Alex Afari found a little seam and made a great play. And Keyshawn Silver was able to sneak in through there as well, slow things down. Big number zero comes back into the ball game. Gonna be tough run. Trying to run downhill against him, see if he can move that way, get him on the run a little bit. Second down. That way looking to throw. Steps up. Dancing around on his tiptoes. Tries to get the pile on, and they'll say he's out of bounds. Just inside the one-yard line, Zion Childress pushes him out. Just missed it. Ball does not cross the line. Oh, he had it in his Ooh, right hand. I know. If it's in his left, he probably gets the touchdown. They get a great pile on Kim look right there. I do think the ball in the right hand goes out of bounds before the goal line. Right now, 6 3, 240 quarterback. And they call timeout now. You're going to lose the opportunity here at the one. And Billy Napier not happy about that operation. Timeout on the field, back in a moment. If you've got a true freshman running back at 6 1, 230. And they'll go with Ball, and he is in there for, he got in for the touchdown. There it is. The lights went out, hard to see if there was a signal. They will give him the touchdown. Kentucky's like, he didn't get in. Well, they'll take, obviously, another look at it before they attempt this point after. They'll get to make sure. there's any chance he got in there that look anyway what do you think I don't think he got in either I didn't, I didn't think he got in initially I thought the whistle should have been blown as well but I just there's a lot of bodies in the ruling on the field was a touchdown so it would be hard to if we have a great angle to know if he was in or not to, to make a decision here I never saw anything that said that he was in, but now the hard part is same thing. If the call was a touchdown, how do you overturn it if you can't see it? That is a very valid point. I mean, he got stood up right there. I don't... You're right. I, I, it's got to be conclusive video evidence to overturn the thing. And I, it's just, you can play that game. I think he didn't get in, but the answer has got to be I know he I didn't know. get in. I know. I saw it. Yes. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Unfortunately for Kentucky, there was just nothing there to give you that definitive look. That is the fourth rushing touchdown for Jaden Ball tonight. Point after is up and good. Things get a little chippy. That's the most rushing touchdown in a game since Trey Burton had five versus Kentucky back in 2010. We've already seen Barry on Brown take one back 99 yards tonight for his fifth career kickoff return for a touchdown. This one will bounce through the end zone and 
Cats coming back out to the 25-yard line. Jit train a minute running back. You need some golf balls after last weekend's what you need. Oh, stop. Stop. Here's Vandergrift all day to throw. Nobody open. He will throw on the run. That one's almost picked off. One hopped it to Jordan Castell. And Vandergrift lucky. That one wasn't intercepted. Well, they just they, they, they took a page out of Florida's book there with the concept. They're also going to flood the right side of the field flat. You're going to have the deep cross. The problem is Florida does not bite at all on the play action. Everyone drops back and lucky that that does not turn into another turnover for this offense. Second down and 10. Vandergriff, 6 of 14 for 109. A touchdown and two interceptions. Vandergriff can't get by the third defender, Jaden Robinson. Split a couple of blue jerseys in the backfield. He'll gain a yard. It's third and nine. That's a tough one on one tackle in the open field against a quarterback that obviously has shown the ability to make defenders miss in the open field. Now, one on one. Man, we have not talked about Dane Key much at all in this football game. Can you find number six in the slot? See if you get him a catch. Gators bringing the house over the middle. Dane Key backpedals and he'll die for the first down. What an effort by Key. Big hit from Aaron Gates, backed Key up, but then Key got his momentum and his feet back under him and got the first down. Now uh, big plays to big players in these moments. That's what needs to happen. Vacated zone, Key finds the open spot, sits there nicely for the quarterback, and then Brock's able to deliver it. Again, a two-back set now for Kentucky with Trainum and Sumo Karnbay. Vandergriff again, time to throw, steps into it, heaves it downfield, looking for Brown, it's incomplete. Devin Moore back there in coverage. I know we talk a lot about Jason Marshall, and, and obviously he's out of the game right now, but Devin Moore has been really impressive in this ball game. Number 28 on the left side of the defense and not biting on the big plays down the field. Stayed on top of the route of these receivers. Handed off to Trainer. He's to the 39. Stopped there by Gates and Bridges on the back end. Kentucky still looking for their first third down conversion. Or excuse me, they were started 0 for 6. They have converted their last two. Their offense on their opening drive of the third quarter was impressive. Trying to keep this drive alive. Looking at third down. And eight. Vandergriff feels the pressure, trying to run for it. He will be tripped up, but will have enough for the first down. Man, it is hard not to love the heart of Brock Vandergriff when things are in crunch time and a play needs to be made. He just wills it into existence, able to step up in the pocket just enough to avoid the pressure coming from his backside. Keeps his eyes up, little pump fake to soften the defense, and then just puts his head down. He's able to get the first down with his legs once again. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter. Vandergriff. Sumo Kong Bay dancing around inside Gator territory down to the 46-yard line. Grayson Howard, first one there. Well, they actually tried the tight end sneak route, which is a beautiful route. You're going to play action, get the tight end working from right to left, and then up the sideline. And Florida, once again, does not bite on it. And smart move by Brock, just taking the check down for the completion. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. Oh, good stuff. Homecoming here at the University of Florida. Fourth quarter football. 
Two touchdown game, Kentucky driving, second down and four. They'll hand it off to Chip Tranum, who will power his way for a big gain inside the Gator 40. Castell and Howard bringing him down, but that'll be a gain of 10 and another Kentucky first down. This is what Kentucky's offense, when it's rolling, looks like. It may not be the fancy stuff, but they just keep moving the chains. At some point, that would be nice to see if you're running the ball effectively, what they do to the flea flicker, took a shot down the field, well executed. But yeah, this is perfect. Plenty of time, so only down two scores. Back to the two tailback look with Conve and Tranum. Tranum can't break the tackle from Aaron Gates, the red shirt freshman who's been injured, played sparingly last week against Tennessee, but looks pretty healthy there as he drops Kentucky for a loss of four. Well, gets right underneath the tight end. Sees it, gets upfield. And a grip over the middle, pass is caught. Dane Key taking a couple of blows. Down to the 28-yard line, a 14-yard pickup, maybe 13 and a half. He needed 14 for the first down. Oh, that was a scary throw at first from Brock Vandegrift, but just a flood route with the deep cross coming as kind of the last option. And he sees his big receiver running across the field and puts it right in a good spot for him. Gavin Wimsett comes in the game. Now he leaves the game, and they keep Vandegrift in at quarterback. Vandergriff says, I'm hot. Get out of the game. Blake Lock down to eight, seven. Kentucky not lined up. They're going to have to use a timeout here. Hasn't missed a game his entire career. Gavin Wimson, after the timeout, they run him back out on the field now, uh, now on his third and one. He is met in the hole, but I think his progress should have it. Jack Pyburn. Number 44 was there to greet him. But I think the big fella got the first down. Yeah, and all of a sudden you're seeing Wimsett running the football, not at the heart of the Florida defense, but more around that tackle towards the edges. And, you know, Kentucky's learned their lesson. We are not successful running at guys like Desmond Watson and Cam Jackson. Got to get to the outside with Gavin Wimsett. Play clock. In single digits, 12-12 to play. Vandegrift throws on the run, and nobody's there. Dan Key was around the area. George Gums was chasing Vandegrift. What do you thought about Brock's play tonight? The one pick was, was bad. The, the other one obviously was not his fault, but I think overall, like, he has been... He's been Brock. He's been competitive. He's run the football effectively. I think he's thrown the ball with a lot of accuracy. We talk about DJ making only his second career start. It's only his seventh career start. These are two very young quarterbacks when it comes to game experience, but I think he's played a good game. Hand it off to train him, looking for a little bit of a hole, and he takes it inside the 25. Down to the 23, Shamar James with the tackle. Well, this is interesting time. Obviously, we know how slow this Kentucky offense is. Don't know how many possessions you'll have. And obviously, Florida's offense has done a good job. So, most likely four down territory here on out. So, Wimsett checks back into the game. They've had some formations where they kept Vandergriff on the field with Wimsett, but straight up exchange at the quarterback position. On a third down and six. Hand it to Barry and Brown. And the Gators were all over. There was nowhere to run. Got to think this might be four down territory for the Cats here. Well, that's another big play by Jaden, or excuse me, by Aaron Gates. Coming up there and forcing the runner to get more east and west. Four down, though. I think this is once again an opportunity. They've gone to their big guy, Dane Key. He's going to be to the boundary, to the left side. 
Big target, short spaces, see if he can give him the football. Gator, or Wildcats, one of two on fourth down. He'll swing it for the outside. Anthony Brown, Stevens not going to get there. Try Quez Bridges making the play for the Gators to snuff out the drive. And Florida finds a way to bend, but defense, when they need the most, fourth down, makes the stop to get off the field. Gators up 34 to 20. Well, he had a chance uh, last night and got Shohei Otani. P. Alonzo with four home runs for the Mets in the playoffs. And thought I went out to baseball practice today, by the way. Tell up Kevin O'Sullivan. So he was telling me about his club. And they look good, as always. Yes. As always. I mean, you, it looks like a football team out there. I'm not kidding. It, it is amazing how big the kids are on the diamond these days. Got some football going on here right now. A guy that played some baseball in high school, DJ Lagway. Matter of fact, they're trying to work through some stuff. Sometimes he gets carried away and throws a football like it's a baseball. And they're trying to get his me mechanics corrected. As you might assume, he was a pitcher. But he will hand it here. Third down coming up. I asked you about Brock Vandergriff. Uh, let me ask you the same question. What do you make of DJ Lagway in his second career start? He's a future star. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 our, I mean, he's big, he's physical, he's cerebral, he's accurate. He can push the ball vertically down the field. Um, he just lacks experience. The only second game as a starter. But going against his defense, I mean, this is, this is if any indication of where he can go, sky's the limit for number two. Wilson comes in motion. Lagway looks the other way, but he is trapped and nowhere to go. He's going to be dropped, or I should say, stood up. Whistle blows. Alex Afari, first one there, but boy, that pocket collapsed in a hurry and really did a great job, that defensive front for Kentucky. Well, he had an opportunity to throw the ball on an Omaha route to the outside to Badger, one on one, and easy completion. It's a long throw, it's a tough throw to the field, college hashes. I get it. You don't want to make a mistake up for you know two touchdowns, but that's when you catch it, you throw it to the sideline, the receiver catches the football, and he gets out of the bounds for the first down. So that's one of the you know, few mistakes that, that we've seen from DJ in this football game. Macklin back to return the punt with Crossshaw. My drive kick. That'll take a big hop, and Macklin will field it at the 27. Well, good coverage by Florida to stretch that one out and force him out of bounds after a three-yard return. Great night at the Swamp, homecoming 2024. Good football game going on here. Cats down by 14, getting late though. Eight minutes to go in the fourth. Vandergriff on first and 10. Dane Key with a first down reception near midfield. Devin Moore over there in coverage. That'll be a gain of 15. I'm sure see at some point in this drive, we see a little bit more of a tempo. You see it right now, back in the huddle, gets a line of scrimmage. Down two scores. Don't got to press too much. Vandergriff to the middle of the field. Passes incomplete. Coverage back there by Devin Moore. Knocks it away at the last moment from Dane Key. Yeah, another great play from number 28 on the back end. Playing soft, just keeping everything in front of him. Gave up the previous play. Once again, everything's in front and able to then drive on the football with anything a little bit further down the field. And sticky coverage and able to get the right hand in there without grabbing.
get it to Sumo Kong Bay, and he'll have a first down, or close to it. Let's see where they spot his foot when it went out of bounds. It'll be at the 40, so that is a first down. And as Miles Graham, the stud freshman linebacker, chasing him down, and Sumo Kong Bay has done what he's done all game and throughout the season, making defenders miss in the open field. Griff trying to hook up with Fred Ferrier. And he missed a wide open receiver and Anderson coming across on the on a middle cross route, same route that he hit just the previous possession. I think he just tried to force that one down the field. Just coming across, hit this one. Easy completion, just forcing the ball down the field. I mean, that's a catch, about 15, 20 yard completion. You're Knocking on the door to get in the red zone. Second down and 10. Van de Griff dodges one defender. Can he dodge another? No. Thrown out of bounds, lost a yard. TJ Searcy, the sophomore out of Thomaston, Georgia. A lot of these third downs early in the game, they were showing that double A pressure with the two linebackers. We'll see if they give that look once again here. Gave Brock a lot of difficulty trying to figure out if they coming or they not coming there in the first half. Third and 11 now. Vandegrift steps up in the pocket, throws high, incomplete. Now do you go for it on third or fourth and 11? Looks like the offense going to stay on the field. I think this is the right decision. I know we've, they've had some interesting decisions this season of go for it, not go for it, but kind of the way this game is going right now, five minutes, just under six minutes to go in the ball game, I think you got to go for it. To the wide side, knocked away at the last moment. Heck of a play on the back end by Aaron Gates. Anthony Brown Stevens was the intended target, and the Gator defense holds. Buck allows the defender to make a play on it. Just a deep out route. You see it right there. Put it on the body of the receiver. Instead, it's high. And Florida and Aaron Gates able to then come down there and make the play on the football. That's a long throw. It's a long throw. Big boy. It's a, the it's college a hashes. That's a big boy throw. <laughs> but he's made some big boy throws tonight, some of those dagger yeah. routes. Like, we've seen Brock show off the arm strength to where you know he can make that throw. 5.50 to play. He's going to try to just grind this one out to the best of their ability. Ball and a tailback. He of four touchdowns today. He is wrapped up, loses a couple of yards. Ball has rushed for 85 yards tonight. Again, first time in Florida football history, and the first time this year in the NCAA, that a true freshman quarterback and a true freshman running back have started in the same game. You look pretty good doing it, too. Yeah, you and I kind of like our eyes open when they were telling us what it was going to look like, and they had all the confidence in the world that it would work. And again, I say this, the Florida's put up almost 400 yards tonight against a team that's given up 250 a game. Handoff off the left side to Jaden Ball. To Eric Jackson with the stop and a timeout taken by Kentucky. Going to leave the Cats with just one remaining. On third down, Agway steps into this one, lofts it up, trying to hit another big one, and... Oh, my goodness, it's caught by Elijah Badger. How in the world 
did he come down with that catch? A gain of 39. Florida's got some playmakers. It ain't just Eugene Wilson. Badger's been doing it all season long. The concentration. He's, he's literally backpedaling, trying to make the catch, cradles it in. And then the concentration with a DB on top of him. And that's, that's what gets you excited right there. These big throws from DJ. Jaden Ball down to the one yard line. Zion Childress saves a touchdown. better offensive performances I've seen for Florida the past couple of years. Do it against this defense with a quarterback making his second career start. Let's not forget his first start. No offense to Sanford. was against Sanford. Set the school record for a freshman quarterback, 456 yards passing. Second career start against this defense. Been pretty special for number two. Handoff goes to Ball, and he just picked up his fifth rushing touchdown to tie Trey Burton and Tim Tebow for the single game Florida record. Our eye opening point after is up and good. Lagway is now 7 of 14, seven completions, okay? Number 29 is now number 38. And here's go back to the long pass. To Badger on the outside, one on one, gives his receiver an opportunity to make a play on it. And then this offense, who struggled in the red zone a week ago against Tennessee, has found their way behind a very, very good offensive line performance. Listen to every word he would say in meetings and has really kind of taken to Graham and it, it's a, as a coach you got to love those type of relationships and you got to have the starter want to really kind of adopt the young guy as well. Look for more information or more feedback on what his staff is telling him. It's been encouraging and exciting to watch Graham step little by little away from DJ over the course of this game. This ball is picked off. Kermani McClain, who hasn't played this year, gets on the field and intercepts Cutter Bowley, who just came into the game, the true freshman, with a pick six to Kermani McClain. 25 yards. Sportsmanlike conduct against Florida. Each player will have one counter for unsportsmanlike conduct. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. This point after is up and good. Well, Kentucky's three game win streak over Florida is going to be stopped tonight. Late hitch route to the field. Bad news, you never want to do that. And McLean says, thank you very much. Going out there trying to earn a spot, depending on what, and how long Jason Marshall's out. The star cornerback for Florida, they may be looking for a replacement. That's one way to get in the conversation. You can see the teammates, they know how hard Cormani's worked to get back into this spot to be able to take some snaps and especially as you mentioned without Mr. Marshall there and who knows how long he'll be out but certainly doesn't look good. A little squib kick. Fielded by Kentucky and they'll have it around the 48 yard line. Willie Rodriguez. A lot to talk about for those guys on SEC football final. Coming up when we are finished here, 321 on the clock. Better Bowie back on the field. 
trying to hit the freshman Hartley Gilmore. The youngster 17 years old. Wearing number 17 for Kentucky. They say that he's been a young man that when he has been healthy has been impressive. Reclassified from the 2025 class to the 2024 class to get into Kentucky. Grew up in South Florida. Bully throws it. That one's incomplete. Flags come in. A couple of flags come in. Where Bully let go of that football. L.J. McCray back there. He may have been uh, involved in possible late hit. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Forcible contact above the shoulders on the defense number 17. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot and carries an automatic first down. So, true freshman on true freshman there. to the face mask. They like LJ though in Florida. And a Daytona, Florida. They say he's making a big impact. Playing limited snaps just because there's so much depth up front. But when he's on the field, he's done some nice things. Marion Wilcox has done some nice things and his opportunities in the backfield, but they don't pick up the pressure and that one's incomplete. Cutter Bowley got ripped by L.J. McCray. Well, he's got to be able to see that the edge pressure. The hit as he was throwing. Therefore, there is no foul for intentional grounding. It's second down. So as a quarterback, you're taught to look at the safety rotations. You see what we call a cap safety is a, is a safety over the top of the nickel coming down. Gives you a good indication. You may get some pressure from that side. Good things for a young quarterback to go back and sell you the tape about. Bowling. Lofts it up and that one's incomplete. Boy, the SEC race, by the way. Wide open now. That was an opportunity. The on the field is an incomplete pass. That plays under video review. So we'll take another look at it. Did Demi Sue Carnbay hang on to this as he got walloped? Triquez Bridges over there making the play. See what part of his body falls first. Looks like that left foot maybe hits the ground. He definitely has control of the football. It's a matter of does the upper body land out of bounds before the lower body touches in. And right there, actually, left foot's down. I think he has control now. So what hits first? And it looks like the left knee maybe gets down in bounds yeah. initially. Before the, the elbow, the left elbow arm area hits the ground, it looks like that left knee may have hit first. And did he have control of the football through the catch? It looks, it looks good to me. Yeah. After review, the rolling on the field is an incomplete pass stands. Third down. Nothing there. Not enough there to overturn it. Against Ole Miss, of course. But you got to keep this train on the tracks. Up top. Incomplete. Trying to hit Hardly Gilmore. For Monty McLean back there in coverage. That's two big time plays for McLean on the outside. One on one. I think the ball was decently thrown and he's stride for stride with the receiver and elevates at the right time to knock it away with the left hand. Twenty nine yard pick six for McLean. Fourth down. Pressure comes. Incomplete. Trying to hit the freshman Willie Rodriguez to tight end and 
the Cats will turn it over. You know, you can't, if you're this coaching staff, you can't fault your team's effort, and they have played hard tonight. Missed opportunities, missed throws, some turnovers, but I just think Florida was the better team. There's no doubt about right. it. A pick six for a touchdown, but nonetheless, as Gator offense has put up 452 All yards. Start on the offense, number 56, five yard penalty, and it remains first down. By the way, Aiden Warner's checked in at quarterback. Get a look at the redshirt freshman out of Winter Park, Florida. Transfer in from Yale. He's completed one pass and two attempts this year. Hand it off here to Jacoby Jackson. And now Florida will just let this clock wind down. We'll have to snap it one more time before the two-minute timeout. Coming up for Kentucky. They get Auburn at home next week. Then they're at Tennessee, host Murray State, at Texas, and finish up with Louisville. Cam Carroll now in it running back. We're in number 27. So that'll get us to our two-minute timeout. Gators trying to close this one out when we come back. Two-minute timeout. To today. Tennessee and Alabama, of course, big impact game there. Georgia and Texas. And those two teams certainly. That ball's caught, no way. Bounced around a few times. Taylor Spirito able to hold on to it with a defender wrapped around him as well. I said, when it's your night, it's your night, and that's been the night for the Florida Gators. These guys are making plays. That was a beautifully thrown football going across his body and then the concentration as well to bring it in. Taylor Spirito, good story tonight. They honored the 84 team. That went 9-1-1, one, one, captured an SEC championship. Later, though, that was taken back for some issues with that team in 84. But his dad was a walk-on on that 84 team. Under a minute to go. And that will be the final play of this game. The Gators can't understate the importance of this game, and Billy Napier knew it. Had to have it. Start the second half of the season with a victory, and they look good doing it. Both sides of the football, and got to look at the future, perhaps, of Gator offense with D.J. Lagway and Jaden Ball. Ball with five rushing touchdowns to tie a single-game record and meanwhile, Lagway finishes with 259 yards through the air and added another 46 on the ground. Heck of a rookie duo, duo you've got here. Heck of a rookie duo you've got here. We talked about DJ at the half. How do you feel about the pair of performances you saw from them tonight? Well, it's exciting to see, you know, some of that hard work is paying off. You know, our personnel department, our on-campus recruiting, the staff, some of those young players are really good. Um, both those kids are, are incredible people too, right? Humble, talented, um, and stepped up. You know, we're without Graham, we're without Montreal, and uh, not only did they play well, they were lights out. Jaden Ball's five rushing touchdowns tie single game records here at Florida. What enabled the ground game to be so productive? Well, I think it's part of who we want to be as an identity. You know, I think it's it's got to be in our DNA. If we want to be a championship contender here, we've got to be really good on the line of scrimmage. And we played good around them with the up front, the tight ends, the quarterback, everybody contributed. You've got a heck of a stretch down the season here. What improvements are most important? Well, I think number one is just the resiliency that this group has shown, right? They've been through a lot, right? They've been beat up. 
Uh, they've been talked about. For them to continue to work in the fashion they have been working, um, and again, it's the way we compete. It's how hard we play. That's got to be part of our DNA. But I'm just proud of the resiliency of the group. For them to go through what they went through last week and then to show up this week, it's pretty special. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Go Gators.